Right. Oh, excellent, excellent. Yeah, Star Wars fans. Padawan. Yeah. Oh, you'll you, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, this morning we celebrate both sacraments, obviously, baptism and Holy Communion, and uh, we look forward to that a little bit later on. Uh, this morning's sermon theme, Exit Lines, is taken from the Gospel text. More on that later, obviously. A couple of announcements before we continue our worship in earnest, and that is the prayer vigil. Uh, all of the cool kids, I think, are waiting to sign up for that. How about that? So uh, please do sign up. You can do it at home. Uh, it is a virtual a, a, a prayer vigil, so please do take a look at that and discipline yourself from... Uh, from Good Friday to Easter Sunday to spend a few moments in prayer. The uh, Buddy Backpack, her loving memory. So thank you for that particular sponsorship. And best wishes to Ada Hobbs, who will be celebrating her birthday today on St. Patrick's Day of all days. Yeah, okay. And best wishes to Frank and Linda Kangas, celebrating their 60 years, been honeymooning for 60 years, right, Linda? Yeah, okay, all right, very good. Yeah, yeah, and that is on Thursday. I, ho I hope you're going to take her someplace special, huh? Party? Yeah, good, good, all right. Enough with that. Let us continue our worship in earnest with the confession and the forgiveness. You have the bold parts. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We've sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the singing of our opening hymn, hymn number 848, Give to Our God Immortal Praise.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord save help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord Just a reminder that the hymn of praise is omitted during the season of Lent. We continue with the prayer of the day. O God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the lesson. The Judeans in Babylon blamed their exile on their ancestors, who had broken the covenant established at Sinai. Here the prophet looks to a day when God will make a new covenant with the people. There will be no need to teach the law, because God will write it on their hearts. A reading from Jeremiah, the word of the Lord. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt. A covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put their God, I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thorns of crown was made and 
Thank you. Very appropriate anthem that Nadine and Roy have chosen. Just want to quote there. In his garden fair, red roses grew that were his care. Come, okay, come on down. <laughs> that were his care. Take a seat, take a seat. Yeah. Uh, unless the seed dies and is planted in the ground and grows, it becomes many and very fruitful. Yeah, good, a wonderful metaphor in the resurrection. One which we're going to pick up here again. Evan's down here. Anybody else? For our radio audience, we've got a good-looking group of kids coming down. And I almost forgot to mention this. My, my wife, Sandy, is uh, with the grandchildren right now. Hello, James Clinton and uh, Eleanor Louise. And uh, sweetheart, if you want to go grab an apple, uh, well, uh, Evan's already grabbed the apples. If you want to grab an apple out of the kitchen, that would, be, that would be very appropriate. Yeah. Okay, Evan, can I take this now? All right, thank you. What is this? Apple, yeah, it's not meant to be a, a secret or anything like that, or a, a trick. I've got to take the stickers off the apple, okay? Um, and I need to grab something here. Okay, where is it? Uh, there it is. Now, what's this? Knife. A knife. You have to be very careful with these, right? I use have you used a knife before? Okay, I hope Mom and Dad were watching, right? No, your grandma was. Well, that's the thing about being a grandparent. You can do all sorts of dangerous things like that. <laughs> okay. All right. Your, your uncles have knives? Okay, here we go. I'm going to cut it in half. All right. There's seeds in it. There's seeds in it. Right. How many seeds are in there? Five. Okay. Let me ask you a question. This might be kind of a trick question. How many, how many trees are in here? Five. Five? Okay. Three? Right. Yeah. We can look at an apple and we look at the seeds and I could ask how many seeds is this apple or this seed going to produce? We don't really know, right? You plant one apple seed in the ground and grows an apple tree and then it grows apples and then there are seeds, numerous seeds coming forth from one particular apple seed. Yeah, okay? That's the way God works. In the mystery and the wonder, one seed is planted and a whole bunch kind of come up. I've got this stole. I found this stole. I was looking through my jackets the other day and kind of cleaning up the closet. And, and uh, can you see this here? I don't know how tight you can get in here, Dustin. But uh, it's, you can see what looks to be what? What do you think this is? Corn. Yeah, it could be a corn stalk or maybe wheat stock. It's something growing, right? Yep. And it's also in the form of a what? In the form of a cross. Do you see that? Yeah. And uh, this is growing, and these seeds are taking root. Yeah. Now, the reason I talk about that is because Sam's going to read a text, uh, and it says, unless the seed dies and falls to the ground, it remains but one seed, but once it flourishes, it produces all sorts of seeds. Yeah. And Jesus used that to describe himself. It's kind of it's hard to understand. It's, it's in the word of what we call metaphor. You're going to understand metaphor a lot when you get older. Like Jesus says, I am the door of the sheep. Does that literally mean that Jesus is a physical door? No, 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 no. It means he gives access to other people, right? Uh, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Well, to the best of our knowledge, we didn't think that Jesus was a shepherd. He was a carpenter, okay? But he's using the image to tell something very special about himself. Yeah. So in the lesson that Sam is going to read, Jesus says, unless the seed dies and sprouts again, it is useless. But when it sprouts, it'll give great growth. It'll give great growth and eternal life to each and every one of us. Yeah. One seed, many, many seeds, much growth, much life. Yeah. Jesus does that a lot. He uses all sorts of little teaching things to kind of tell us about his love and about the, the, the wonderful love and mystery that God has for each and every one of us. 
Yeah, I'm not going to read out of that today, so we'll just put that off to the side. Did you bring this today? Yeah, good for you. Evan and I are doing First Communion instruction after class, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah right. And uh, Owen as well, right. Yeah, let's pray, shall we? Gracious and loving God. One seed is planted, many seeds come. So it is with your love. You die and rise, and you give eternal life to all and every one whom you call. We love you, Lord Jesus. Amen. What do you suppose I should do with these apples? Give them to you, right? Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> All right, there you go, Edie. There you go, Owen, Evan, okay. <laughs> okay, uh, exit stage right. I guess you already knew that for Sunday school. Anybody else want an apple? Here we go, here we go. Whoa. Go long. Well, no, I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Jesus entered Jerusalem for the last time to celebrate the Passover festival. Here, Jesus' words about seeds planted in the ground turn the disaster of his death into the promise of a harvest in which everyone will be gathered. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. And said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must also follow me, and where I am, there will be my servant also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, the voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now it is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was going to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Brothers and sisters in Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Exit lines. And just what is an exit line? It doesn't mean leaving. Simply put, an exit line is a parting remark. In the world of theater, an exit line is, and I quote, a parting remark before an actor leaves the stage. And if we were to look at the life we are presently living as actors on a stage, I rather suspect it is safe to say that our lives are filled with many exit lines. For was it not William Shakespeare who said, all the world is a stage and all men and women merely players, 
They all have their exits and entrances, and one man in his time plays many parts. And if we agree with old Billy Shakespeare that life is but a stage with many exits and entrances, then what might be the best exit line of all times? Well, a couple come to mind. Baseball season is just around the corner, and who can forget Lou Gehrig's farewell speech on July 4th, 1939? Some of us weren't around, but we know it. That's right, Lou Gehrig, the Iron Man, the Iron Horse, due to his ability to play baseball despite suffering from a variety of injuries. But it was a disease that would be named after him, Lou Gehrig's disease, or ALS, that would take the Iron Horse out of the lineup. And with a packed house of Yankee faithful at Yankee Stadium on the 4th of July, 1939, go ahead and Google it if you want, it's right there. The old iron horse stood in front of a microphone and said, fans, for the past two weeks, you've been reading about the bad break I got. Yet today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. Hardly a dry tear in Yankee Stadium. That was the last day that Lou Gehrig would ever wear a baseball uniform as the disease that would bear his name claimed his life two years later. Yes, all the world is a stage, and all men and women merely players. They all have their exits and their entrances. And then there's more. How about General Douglas MacArthur? Retirement from public life with his words to Congress Old soldiers never die, they just fade away. And another exit line, that would have to be in the exit line Hall of Fame, came to us on July 20th, 1969. Where were you? When astronaut Neil Armstrong exited Apollo 11's lunar module and became the first person to walk on the moon and half a Billion people watched his steps on the television when he stepped out on the moon and said, what, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And for 19 years, from 1962 to 1981, basically my childhood, we all remember CBS News anchor Walter Cronkite was a fixture in our living rooms. He provided a steady and comforting commentary to the momentous events of the 60s, from rocket launches to the Vietnam War to a political assassinations to the Watergate scandal. Oh, Walter, where are you now, huh? Where is that calm, soothing voice and presence, old Uncle Walt? And if Walter were preaching this sermon today, he would sign off by saying, and that's the way it is, Sunday, March 17th. Huh? Exit lines. Of course, it goes without saying that effective exit line needs to be memorable. It captures all of the action or drama that preceded it. A good exit line summarizes all of the efforts, hopes, dreams of the one who speaks it. A good exit line summarizes the tragedy and the triumph that have taken place as rhetoric moves from the speaker's mouth to the hearer's ear. A good exit line punctuates the hope that is within us and helps alleviate the fears that surround us. Yes, all the world is a stage, and all men and women merely players. They all have their exits and entrances, and one man plays many parts. Jesus had a few exit lines. You knew I was going to get there sooner or later, didn't you? 
And I'll bet you can remember a few. Not to get too far ahead of ourselves on our Lenten journey, but on Good Friday, Jesus had seven last words from the cross. Each one of those, in and of itself, could serve as a good exit line. Truthfully, <laughs> church attendance isn't all that good on Good Friday, the worship service. It's very poorly attended. So let me give them to you right now. <laughs> Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. How often that is the case in the midst of our sinfulness. Jesus says to the thief who is next to him, the thief who believed in him as he was sitting there being crucified, today you will be with me in paradise. What a wonderful exit line. It's not up to who we are or what we've done, but simply the grace and the mercy of turning back to Jesus Christ. And Jesus from the cross says to Mary, who he realizes is going to be childless, with, with, without any help, without any support, and he says to his mother, woman, behold thy son, to John, his, his beloved friend, and he says to John, behold thy mother. Another beautiful exit line. God doesn't want to see any of us be alone. And then from the cross, he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Oh, some of us have been there, yeah. And then as he's about ready to expel and take his last breath, I thirst. How often we thirst for righteousness, for a fair shake, for an opportunity that never seems to be ours. And then he says, it is finished. All of the effort that he did on your behalf comes to this beautiful culmination. And then last, but certainly not least, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Exit lines for all of us. Once again, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but another wonderful exit line for Jesus comes to us after the Easter resurrection where the last words of Matthew's gospel tell us, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. But I think of all of the exit lines that we might attribute to our Savior and muse over, I find this morning's gospel text most intriguing. Good job reading, by the way. In John's gospel, we are informed that the Passover festival is at hand. And there were some inquisitive Greeks that wanted to be introduced to Jesus. Picking up on John's gospel text, we read, Now among those who went up to worship at the Passover festival, there were some Greeks. They came to Philip and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains but one single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit, many trees. And those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it to eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Wow. A treasure trove of exit lines. A plethora. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Jesus is about to die. But instead of saying, I consider myself to be the luckiest man on earth, Jesus says, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground, into the earth and dies, it remains but a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And you, dear friends, you are that fruit. Jesus is about to die. But instead of saying, old soldiers never die, they just fade away. Instead of saying that, Jesus says, those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Jesus is about to die. 
But instead of saying, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind, Jesus says, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Jesus is the exit line of all exit lines. If you're taking sermon notes, that's the one thing to write. <laughs> For it is true, as Shakespeare tells us, all the world is a stage, and we all have our exits and our entrances. Then it's through the power of Christ's exit that all of us have our entrance our entrance into eternal life. And so, dear friend, as you go through this life, living out your days, trying to figure out what your exit line might be, consider this counsel from your Savior, from the promises of Scripture. Jesus will never leave you. Jesus will never forsake you. And when he dies, he says, when I, and when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism unto death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. I have been crucified with Christ, says the Apostle Paul. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. I do not set the grace of God aside. In a short while, we're going to baptize another candidate for the kingdom of God. He will have many exit lines. He will journey forth in many different ways. He will stumble and he will fall and we will pick him up again. He will learn many of those exit lines from the nurture and the love and the comfort that you give him. He will learn many of those exit lines and be very courageous because of the role modeling and the mentoring that this entire community sets before him. For only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. And that's the way it is. Sunday, March 17th. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please rise.
Christ's exit, his death and resurrection brings us to the entrance of eternal life. Along with the church, we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Congregation may be seated. And we invite Liam George with his entire baptismal party to come forward, please. Gather around, do not be shy. It's been a while since we've had a baptism. Gather around right over here, please. 121, page 121. Gather over here, right, right over there, yeah. There we go. Welcome. Let's see. You can come up here. Okay, all right. In Christian love, you've presented this child for holy baptism. You should therefore faithfully bring her to the services of God's house, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. As she grows in years, you should place in her hands the Holy Scriptures and provide for her instruction in the Christian faith to learn those exit lines, that living in the covenant of her baptism in communion with the church, he may lead a godly life until the day of Jesus Christ. Do you promise to fulfill these obligations? If so, respond by saying, I do. Please, okay. And then, sir, I want you to grab this picture right here and start pouring as I, as I start praying. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, we give you thanks for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters and you created heaven and earth. By the gift of water, you saved those whom you had chosen, Noah and his family. You led Israel by pillar of cloud and fire through the sea out of slavery into the freedom of the promised land. In the waters of the Jordan, your son was baptized by John and anointed with the spirit. By the baptism of his own death and resurrection, your beloved son has set us free from the bondage to sin and death and has opened the way to joy of kingdom and freedom and everlasting life. He made water a sign of the kingdom of a cleansing and rebirth. In obedience to his command, we make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Pour your Holy Spirit so that he who is here baptized may be given new life. Wash away the sins of all of those who are cleansed by this water and bring them forth as inheritors of your glorious kingdom. To you be given praise and honor and worship through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. I ask you now to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin and confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the evil, the devil, and all of his empty promises. If so, respond by saying, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as we've just confessed in the words of the Apostles' Creed? If so, respond by saying, I believe. Thank you. He looks very content in your arms. I think we're going to keep him there. Okay. You want to bring him in here for the landing? Okay. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah you, you, you got it, right? Okay, right? Liam George Perry, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. He's smiling, everybody. <laughs> God, the Father of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, we give you thanks for your freeing your sons and daughters from the power of sin 
and for raising them up to new life through this holy sacrament. Pour your Holy Spirit upon E.M. George, the spirit of wisdom and knowledge, the spirit of joy in your presence, the spirit of the knowledge of good and evil, in the death and the resurrection and the hope of Jesus Christ. Amen. Liam George Perry, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Amen. You want to see your additional grandparents right over here? Yeah, right over here. Now, you know, you know all these people here. Yeah, they're going to spoil you and surround you with the love. But guess what, Liam Perry? You also have grandparents out here. Yeah, all these strange-looking people out here. <laughs> we are all part of the same family. We are all part of the same Lord. We do not know how long or how short our days are. But one thing we do know, through the promise of this resurrection water right here, you are sealed with Christ forever. Nothing will separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Okay, here we go one more time. Right. Liam, George, we've got a couple of other parting gifts to give with you. Yeah. Liam, George, these are, uh, oh, I should do the candle first. Shame on me. Liam, George, you will grow and you will understand the power and the symbol of candles. We light them, obviously, on birthday cakes to show how much we've grown in one year. But we also light this candle taking this small light, this baptismal candle, off this big light. This big light represents, of course, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we take our light off of Jesus. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and give glory to your God in heaven. I give that to you, Dad. And of course, Liam George, we want to raise you in the faith. Not only just today with baptism. So Grandpa and Grandma, these are some books that we want read every time you get to take care of him, okay? All right, give that over here, all right? And a certificate suitable for framing. Liam George Perry, I once knew somebody who had a very important office. Uh, and, you know, instead of having all the diplomas and all that, they had their baptismal certificate hanging up. And that person said, that's the only one that really matters. So here we go. Yeah. Give that to you as well. And then, Sue, what do we do? use these quilts for, Sue Shock? Wrapped in the love of this congregation, right? Liam Perry, I was almost, almost going to say Liam Nelson. Liam Perry, <laughs> you are wrapped in the love of this congregation. Yes. You have so many grandparents right here. Yeah. Let us pray. Please join with me. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ, into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. We welcome you into the Lord's family. We receive you as a fellow member, a worker with us in the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us welcome this new member with a nice round of applause. Yep, you can return back to your seat, and please rise as we continue with prayer. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and all the world in need. God of the covenant and promise, 
Through the church, you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists, particularly during this time of year on the cusp of Holy Week, whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O God. God of the nations, you desire in peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates for human rights, social justice, and the welfare of children. We pray for peace and justice for those areas of the world where there is open conflict, particularly in the Ukraine, in Gaza, in the Middle East. Hear us, O oh God. God of goodwill, you restore what is broken. We pray for any experiencing estrangement, conflict, or abuse in family or within the community. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions or other homelessness. Hear us, O oh God. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homebound, lonely, grieving, or with, challenged with disease or illness. Particularly this day, we pray for Fred Fox, Chris Leesmackey, Carolyn Torgerson, and those whom we silently name in our hearts at this time. Hear us, O oh God. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Particularly this day, we pray for Mary Wentland upon the death of her brother, Harry. Hear us, O oh God. Accompany us on our Lenten journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share the Lord's peace. Move around to do so, please. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace, Stephen. God's peace, doctor. The offering will be received. Please be seated. God's peace, Jim. Please rise. Yeah. 
Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but with word, grace, and life. Bless us with these, your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and light, heaven and earth are full of your glory. night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this blood is in the new covenant shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray as our Lord and Savior has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come for all who's now ready, these gifts of God for the people of God. Please do come as the ushers invite you to do so. Kneel at the altar. Please do sing the hymns as Nadine introduces them. All who come in Christian faith are and welcome to commune. You may be seated.
May this true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Compassionate God, you have fed us with the bread of heaven. Sustain us in our Lenten pilgrimage. May our fasting be hunger for justice, our alms a making of peace, and our prayer the song of grateful hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Receive the benediction of our Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look down upon you with favor in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We close with our final hymn, one of my favorites, hymn number 545. Hymn number 545, Lord dismiss us with your blessing. Please be seated. One announcement that I forgot to give and I need to inform you of, and that is uh, Fred Fox uh, has been hospitalized very severely. Uh, Fred originally was diagnosed with pneumonia, and uh, it was a tough bout of pneumonia. They thought that he would be able to rally around that. But while he was diagnosed with pneumonia, he was also diagnosed with prostate cancer and the prostate cancer has spread into his bones. And so it, the outcome is very tough for Fred uh, and the family, obviously. Uh, Fred has been in and out for the past, of, to my knowledge, I saw him last night, for the past, um, well, I'm gonna guess 24, 48 hours. There will be some tough decisions that need to be made um, tomorrow with respect to hospice and things of that nature. So uh, please do keep Fred and the family in your thoughts and prayers these days. Uh, he's a very well-loved man. And um, we, are, uh, we are saddened to hear this news. And uh, we, uh, we pray for the best and for the best peace during the next days and the upcoming weeks. Go in peace, serve the Lord.